Hey kids, it's ARP. This is the ARP cast, somewhat live from the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains in eastern Tennessee. Today we talk about different things, weird people, and maybe unicorns and rainbows. We read poetry and short stories too. Most of all, we keep it real. This is the ARP cast, starting now. Arpcast number 35, January 3, 2018. Hashtag HTDOJ, happy third day of January. It's here. It's gone like that already. 72 hours. It's gone. Are you working out? Did you work out today? Did you, Monday, did you go to the gym? They were all open. And what's your business and what the contracts, all that good stuff. Are you keeping up with your resolutions? Finding your runner's high. I went tonight, but I've kind of been going off and on for the last 60 days or so. I joined a little gym here. Well, tonight we hear from our friend, our good friend John Oliver, the other John Oliver. Um, yeah, I, I really love this guy. You know, the accent, the, he, he, the laughter, it's wonderful. So his letter, which I'm going to read to you tonight, titled simply Howie, uh, speaks to his lack of physicality. And, and some other things. Mayhem, intrigue, romance ensue. It's crazy. So remember, this is a bit tongue-in-cheek. Cheeky, monkey, that sort of thing. But when I read it, I just get a big laugh, a guffaw, if you will. And so uh, I cleared uh, this with copyright, and uh, so I'm going to read it to you tonight. My dearest Sophie, with the incontrovertible evidence of your recent running enthusiasms and general athleticism, I felt it was about time I finally confronted Mum as to her faithfulness during the 1980s, as paternity is obviously in question. She cracked. It was the milkman. Not actually a milkman as we know it. The concept of milk delivery was long extinct by 1988. Instead, it was Howie Winkleberg the under-manager of the Shake Shack in the food court at the Saramonte Shopping Center. Milkshakes were his game, and Howie was his name. His level of professionalism was unparalleled. His intellectual capacity was not only up to the task of pulling down that silver handle to start the flow of viscous-flavored frozen milk into the wax-papered cup of size, of a size individually chosen by each customer. He also knew intuitively when to push it back up just in time to stop the flow before it oozed over the sides. Howie was legendary among the spandex-clad females of varying ages who all vied to catch his eye. His athletic prowess was an endless topic of conversation. Most had heard of the medals and wards that lined his mantelpiece, the kindergarten certificate for the rigorous jumping on a box competition, the silver medal in the St. Joseph's Primary School egg and spoon race, the age seven and under largest thighs in San Mateo County Cup. Howie was tall, rugged, athletic, and handsome. He was renowned for his grace, intelligence, and amusing banter. There was no witticism involving milkshakes that Howie couldn't use to dazzle everyone around him. His mystery was only enhanced by the red and white striped apron that accentuated the expansive width of his manly shoulders. His officially named soda jerk white paper hat was always worn at a slightly jauntier angle than his colleagues. He had an impeccable sense of style. It is is a proven fact that a man in uniform can set women's hearts aflutter, and the sheer sexiness of the Shake Shack colors, fit, and style were enough to make otherwise sensible females experiencing tingling sensations in their knees, also in their elbows and wrists, although this may have been a touch of early onset arthritis, but that's merely conjecture. The rumors about the girth of Howie's thighs were difficult to confirm due to the height of the spotlessly clean stainless steel counters at Shake Shack. However, the confirmation came daily as the crowd of salivating women congregated for what they knew would be the end of Howie's shift. As he neatly folded his apron and discarded that day's hat, the anticipation grew to a fever pitch. Finally, Howie would stride out from behind the counter with his bulging thighs stretching the very seams of his scarlet polyester Shake Shack pants 
an otherwise intelligent woman, women would faint on the spot. At this time of life, Mum was herself experiencing some strange hormonal need to run great distances. She would head out on a Sunday morning, and the next I would hear would be a phone call from somewhere exotic to let me know that she was fine. Just checking in, she would say quite chirpily. Seattle, Washington, Bogota, Columbia, who knew where? But she would always be home in time for dinner, panting and exhausted admittedly, but home nonetheless. Is it any wonder that in passing by the sleek architectural lines of Saramonte Shopping Center, after a hard run, that she was enticed inside by the thought of a cold strawberry shake? Glancing coyly over the counter, her eyes met Howie's. Sparks flew. She was so overwhelmed by his red and white striped gloriousness that she was barely able to mumble, A medium strawberry shake, please. Just try to imagine how her legs must have turned to jelly as he leaned in close to her and with a knowing smile and a twinkle in his eye said, Can't I tempt you to try a large one? She was lost. End of story. Done for. She admits it now. She succumbed. Right there on the spotless stainless steel Shake Shack countertop amid a disarray of wax paper cups that had formerly been neatly arranged in size order to provide simple choices to the mentally ill-equipped consumer that gravitated naturally to Saramonte. Among metal trays of variety toppings, which included M&M's, chocolate chips, chopped peanuts, etc., etc., you get the picture, and despite the unequivocal risk of ending up with multicolored sprinkles embedded at her bottom, she succumbed. She was fallen woman throwing caution to the winds as she was overpowered by the inherent manliness of Howie Winkleberg in his undeniably sexy uniform and his soda jerk paper cap that had now slipped precariously to balance on his left ear. She swears, and I believe her, that this was just a one-off aberration. She heard, through the spandex-clad grapevine, that Howie had decided he deserved more than just making milkshakes all day. Apparently, he committed himself to a life of travel and adventure. He bought an innovative combination of tricycle and hot dog stand, and could be seen at all manner of Bay Area events doing a roaring trade, especially among the female attendees. Gone was his spiffy uniform, but even in jeans and a t-shirt, he commanded attention and sales were brisk. His sales were better outside of San Francisco itself, and the further he got into the suburbs, the better he did. The ladies of Walnut Creek had never seen the likes of Howie. In the city, he was vilified by the hipster food cart owners with their full beards and shaved heads for being a purveyor of carcinogenic processed meats. Their own carts were thronged with customers clamoring for tofu skewers with seaweed and Norwegian pine needle garnish, so he was hardly a threat. They simply didn't want Howie in their vicinity. Off he would pedal and it hardly bears thinking about what his thighs must look like by this time after towing a steel cart and a half ton of unidentified processed meat up the hills of San Francisco. Mum will never know whether Howie felt there was something special in that chance encounter or if she was just one of many to endure the embarrassment of arriving home and explaining why their knickers were full of multicolored sprinkles. Only now do I realize my naivete in believing the story of the birthday party, the exploding baked Alaska, the wayward child, the water balloon, the Indian elephant, and the one-armed juggler. You know that I still love you as if you were my own. Yours sincerely, John E. Oliver. I beseech you to write like that, to speak like that, to be like that. I just love it. I'm crazy about it. I hope you are too. Thank you for listening on this Wednesday, January 3, 2018. And we're going to see you back here on Friday. Remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Listen to the program. Send me your comments, your feedback. I love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Well, kids, you know who this is. It's ARP, damn it. You have been listening to the ARP cast. A sensational, fact-filled experience meant to change the world. I'm happy you stopped by. Our sponsors, those greedy, wily bastards, thank you too. Make sure to write, this has been the ARPcast. I'm out.